Hello, welcome back. This is lesson number four in theory. The first thing I want to talk about, I didn't talk about it before. In lesson number two, we talked about the time value of notes. But I forgot totally to tell you that sometimes the notes are not necessarily all that important too. Sometimes you need silence in music. It can be very important. And that brings us to the topic of rests. All right. And rests work exactly like notes, except it just means you don't play anything, okay? So here, for example, I have a quarter note, all right? And if you remember, that's worth one beat. Well, this funny looking thing is called a quarter rest. It is also worth one beat. We don't know why it looks so funny. Some notation, it was just developed. They just did it way back. We don't know. But it does look like that. So instead of counting for one beat on a quarter note, the rest would tell you don't make any sound for one beat. All right. Okay. Now, also here, this was a half note. Remember, a half note is a circle with a stem on it. Well, this is what a half rest looks like. It just sits on the middle line. All right. Okay. And likewise with the whole note, this was four counts. It's hanging off the fourth line. You can sort of think of it as a little stronger, a little longer than the half rest. This one, it's sitting, okay? And this one's holding on. So this one's worth two, which is a half note is worth two. And this one is hanging down. It's a little stronger. So it's worth four. Now, I don't want you to get the wrong impression about these whole rests. Sometimes you'll see a whole note rest like this just an entire bar by itself, so it doesn't always mean it's going to be four. It just means the whole bar, so it gets a little confusing, but normally the whole rest is four beats. Okay, and likewise, remember we had eighth notes, these funny things with the hooks? Well, we've got an equally funny little rest for the hook, too. It goes kind of the opposite direction. Likewise, the sixteenth note, the rest with the two hooks. Likewise, the 32nd note, the rest with the three hooks. They're kind of opposite to what the note looks like, okay? So remember, the eighth note is half a beat. So in the case of the rest, you just don't do nothing for half a beat, all right? Likewise with the 16th and 32nd, which we won't get into too often because they're not going to be used in early lessons very much, but they will be definitely important down the line. Now, likewise, with the rests, remember with a whole a dotted quarter note, it added half the value. So remember a dotted quarter note was one quarter note plus half a quarter note, which equals one and a half really. Well, the same applies with a rest. You put the dot on there, so it's a quarter rest plus a half rest, okay? Likewise here, a ha dotted half rest is like the dotted half note. Remember the dot just adds half to it. So it's a half note plus half a half note, a quarter note. Yeah, it's confusing. But just what you need to know, yes, rests work exactly like the normal notes. It just means it's silent, all right? And silence can be golden, it's an old expression. But sometimes if you see an orchestral sheet, sometimes, you know, maybe the trumpet's not playing for bars at a time, you'll have a whole page of rests. But Usually not so much in piano, but yes, you've just got to remember, rest means don't do anything, but it still exists for a while. Okay, the next thing I want to get on to is something called intervals, all right? Now, I'm just gonna put up a new little drawing here. You know what this drawing is. Yes, it's our famous G major scale, all right? And I've got it going for two octaves on here. All right, and I just put it in G because it just shows up a little bit better on, it's easier to have it on the staff rather than if I'm going to do two octaves. And remember, an octave is just going from one all the way up eight notes, all right? And then I did go up another eight notes too. Well, ah, there we go. There we go, a little bit better. That's two octaves. It means it's from G to G to G. All right, but what an interval is, is the distance between these things, okay? Now if you look up 
above here. Okay, we'll go and see here. All right. All you do to count intervals is you just count notes. So I'm gonna put another one here. All right, now what do you think that is? You go starting with the first note, that'd be one, two, three. It's a third, all right? And on the score, that's a C. So we one, two, three. You just count up the score. And this would be a third. One, two, three. If I started on F, all right? One, two, three. Just a third, all right? Now, likewise, I can go up here. What do you think that is? Well, that would be one, two, three, four, five. And likewise here, one, two, three, four, five. Now this is going to be very important. I'm going to start teaching something called ear training, which is, some people think it's the most difficult thing in all music, but it's very important. It's, it's how you can actually hear and play things. If you ever wonder how a piano player or a musician, they can actually hear a song and then just play it. Well, that's ear training, all right? And it's a little complicated, but the first thing in ear training you need to know is to count the intervals. Now, I don't want you to get confused. There's all these in between here. I'll get into that later. There's, this is a fifth, all right? And okay, here's a third. Again, one, two, three. Now, this is actually a third, too. I don't want it to get confusing. That is actually a third, too. But right for now, all I want you to know is count the distance between the notes. We'll just start with white notes for now. I'll be getting into the black notes very soon. But it is just a matter of counting. So here I'm starting on D. One, two, three, four, five. And here it's one, two, three, four, five. That's all I want you to know for now. And don't worry about what they sound like. Okay, that'll be very important down the line. It's just a matter of counting. All right, so in this case, what do you think that is? That's actually a second. One, two. All right, and it would be one, two. Just count them up. All right, if you count it from here, one, two, there's a second as well. Very simple. Now, Here's a little bit tricky. Is this an interval? I've only got one note there. It's this note right here. It's a C, our friend C. Yeah, it's called a first. It really is. It's also got the name unison, okay? You don't have to bother about that too much. Just know it's considered an interval, all right? Likewise here, these are two Cs, all right? You got C and you've got C. That's what's known as an octave, all right? Even though it's the same note, but that's another thing that's just a, just a big difference, okay? It's not too important yet. But just out of the wondering, what is that? What do you think? One, two, three, four. Always remember to count the first note. One, two, three, and then the last note, four. That's a fourth, all right? If I went up two more, you got a sixth, all right? Okay, that's pretty much all I want to say about intervals right now because we will be getting into ear training, all right? And ear training, the main thing about ear training is, okay, now in the ear training things, I'm going to play a third. But now you can actually hear what it sounds like, all right? And there's ways to train the ear on how that sounds, where I can, that was a third, a fifth sounds like this. All right, quite different. A third sounds like this. All right, okay, so that will be an ear training. But right now, the main thing to remember is just how to count. You have to just basically be able to count to eight, really. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight very simple all right that was i hope not too complicated a lesson and we will right be back for lesson number five in theory which will really start getting into some ear training and train you how to listen thank you